In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do that iconic bobblehead moment in Photoshop. We're just going to get straight into it. I'm not here to waste your time. So we're going to hop straight into Lightroom and we're going to choose the photo that we want to make the bobblehead moment on. Okay, so now that you have your photo, you're going to color grade it. I'm just going to bring the exposure up a tiny bit, add some blues in the shadows, and I will be doing an in-depth tutorial on how I color grade. So if you're interested in that, definitely stay on the lookout for that. I'm going to bring some warmth to the midtones and just really play around with the colors. I personally really like to get really creative with my color grading because I'm all about being different and unique and honestly just blending into the crowd isn't my cup of tea. As far as I'm gonna go, I'm definitely gonna go in the more editorial route. Once you have the colors that you are satisfied with, you're gonna bring it into Photoshop and personally I love using Adobe software. Adobe just understands the assignment. They really just get it. Once we open it up into Photoshop, it honestly does help a lot if your subject in the photo is up against a black background or a solid backdrop. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to do it with a solid background and then I'll show you an example of how to do it without a solid background. We're going to zoom in on her face. We're gonna unlock the layer. We're gonna duplicate it by copy and pasting it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a lasso. I'm gonna go around her head and then we're gonna select it. After that, we're gonna select and burst. And then what this is gonna do is it's gonna delete everything around her except her head. And then Command D to get rid of the little marching ants around her. We're gonna press E for eraser. And then we're gonna just slowly just start erasing the background around her so we just focus on her head. Playing around with the different brush sizes is definitely gonna help you have a lot more control on what areas you want to keep and which ones you want to remove. So play around with the harshness, play around with the softness, and you can find all of that in the top left. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Nathalie. I'm a creative photographer. I'm based in a small town and there's literally no one here to help. And I am constantly trying to push myself and trying to really show people that it's not where you live. It's not the equipment that you have. It's you as a creative, as a photographer, as an artist to use what you have. I literally had a photo shoot at Target the other day. I had This photo shoot was at Walmart, like be for real. Who has a photo shoot at Walmart? And it's those exact locations and thoughts that really makes people think like, there's no way that he's gonna eat there. And then boom, I serve. And I really wanna motivate you guys to use what you have because I use the same camera for six years. And when I tell you, it's literally right here. I literally grew up on this camera. It's the Canon C3i with the kit lens. I think it's like the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. I wore it out. Like the screws were falling apart. At one point I had to deconstruct it to reconstruct it back together. Like I do not have an engineering degree for that, hello? Like put the picture up on the screen right now. It was that bad. And like I used what I had and I wouldn't motivate you guys. I know sometimes you might feel like, oh, I need to have the best equipment in order to start photography or I'm waiting on that one lens to come here so I can start taking better pictures. No. Like, yes, it might help you, but right now, if you don't know how to use what you have right now, what is gonna make the difference in having better equipped? Like, oh, not me preaching, but like, I really wanna motivate you guys to use what you have, so that is something that I'm really big on. I, a lot of us really wanna have the nicest gear, and it's not about that. It's about having the creativity to be able to push yourself no matter what situation or circumstance you're in. Okay, so now that I have her head all selected, unhide my original layer, and then I'm gonna select all my layer two, and we can just go ahead and label this head, and <laughs> we can do Control T for transform, and we can go ahead and just make this, boom, like like really big, really extra, and obviously right now it's not serving, but give it a second, trust the process, we're almost there. We're gonna go ahead and just adjust it to where it covers up her original head low key, but enough to where it really makes it feel like she has a bubble head. And keep in mind, when you're shooting these photos, it's something that you need to think about if you wanna execute this. You need to think about, is her head gonna give bubble head? because what I like to do in this situation right now, looking at this photo, the reason why her head looks like such a bobblehead is because this cart right here is literally almost as big as her head. 
And if you had her standing like close to the camera and then you tried to make her head a bobblehead, it's just not gonna give bobblehead because her head is already being bobbled. So I really wanna make sure that you guys are thinking about this creative concept when you are on set because last thing you wanna do is come back to Photoshop and then you're like, oh my gosh, I literally told so and so that I was gonna do a bubble head and I literally forgot and now you're struggling in Photoshop and you're literally trying your hardest to save it and you just can't. So think about the creative concepts before you start the photo shoot and while you're on set. Okay, so now that you have the head around the size that you wanted it to be, you're gonna go ahead and hide it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select eye for getting a sample of our background and then we're gonna press B for brush and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger, bring the hardness down and then we're gonna erase her, not erase, but like cover up her face with the background just so we don't see her. Perfect, so now she's headless. It's giving headless horseman. We're here for it. Alrighty, so it is coming together really nicely. We are almost there, you guys. So next step is we're gonna adjust the head. In this specific photo, as you can tell, her hair is high key covering the, the cart and her arm. I'm gonna go ahead and take the eraser and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the hardness up just a tiny bit, not super much, just so it's not completely feathered out, but it's a little bit more in balance. Really clean up the edges, get it off of the car. I'm just gonna clean up her hair a little bit more because it's giving a little bit messy. Yeah, the wind was being crazy that day. I literally remember, if you haven't seen my first YouTube video, you can literally tell that the wind is just going everywhere. I think my light literally was flying away that day. And also, if you are curious about the equipment that I use, I do have Amazon Infinity. If you do want to support your bestie, there will be links in my bio and each and every single one of the links is going to be equipment on Amazon that I use. I use the FJ400 by Westcott with the Octa-M diffuser rapid box and I use a heavy duty C-stand. I love the lighting. Lighting is everything. Ugh, just Westcott just gets it. Like Westcott is literally that girl. Love it. So, so far the photo is high key eating and it's definitely giving bobblehead. Alrighty, and then we have our iconic Walmart bobblehead moment. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do this photo but in a different environment when your background is high key busy and there's so much going on that you're literally struggling to photoshop a bubble head. Let's get into it. In this specific photo, there is white brick behind her. So it is gonna be a little bit of a struggle, but we're literally gonna do the same technique. What you can start off with is you can do select subject on Photoshop. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It really just depends on your photo. But low key right here, it kinda ate. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our lasso tool and then we're gonna go into the bottom portion of her body and we're going to select it holding option so it unselects it and then we can go ahead and rename this layer to head and we can do the transform tool and make your model's head as big as you want. Alrighty, so a big factor to the bobblehead moment is definitely making that neck tiny. Right now, her neck is literally as big as her head and it's just not giving bobblehead. It's giving normal head. So what we need to do is we need to snatch that neck in and really make it look like we put a corset on her for like 24 hours. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab the eraser tool and we're gonna go underneath and just start getting rid of that neck. Whenever you're done doing that, move her bobble head down to her original neck. Okay, so now that we have her head all situated, as we can tell, we are entering that really dangerous territory that we're low-key all afraid of is the busy background. So this is where generative AI comes in and saves our career. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the lasso and grab those spots that have like the background in there and really just don't even type anything. Just let AI understand the assignment and it's really all about feeling out the vibe. If this doesn't eat, this is gonna be so embarrassing. Oh my God. Okay, AI ate, period. No, because sometimes AI just doesn't get it. Like, it be giving some questionable moment. As you can tell, it added more hair. It really filled it in. Something that I really like to do is I'll be like, 
hair in the wind and it'll add like a majestic like hair in the wind moment i'll put up an example right now i did a pizza king moment with one of my besties and i heard them all i literally just been going up to people and just hyping them up drew like a little cheese like on the ground and it was very much inspired by like jerry the wimpy kid and i made her hair look like it was like flying in the wind like so definitely playing with ai and letting it know what it is that is in your head it can definitely help you really execute those dreams and make them become a reality for sure already so there is some moments that definitely look very questionable so just go in there there we go you guys oh my gosh this is looking so good i'm literally so excited oh my gosh you guys lighting is everything her hair oh her makeup her outfit she never misses all right you guys and then we have our final result i'm gonna have more tutorials coming soon for you guys and if you have any questions about any content that is on my instagram and you're like how did you do that bestie i will answer it just comment down below and let me know what it is that you want to know i am definitely trying to change the game in photography like i want you to feel inspired and motivated and want to go out there and create art like i don't know what all these 2018 youtubers were doing when they were gatekeeping all this information like we're done with like the 2017 gatekeeping photography youtube era she's over you guys have a wonderful day and night whenever you're watching this make sure you subscribe if you're feeling the vibe and go check out my Instagram. I have a lot of great content over there and I'll see you guys around. Bye, Dusty.